This is Full Game Prometheus giving you another game recap. Once again, I'm going to be in the Oakland playbook. I'm going to be playing around a couple different formations this time. This is a very, very annoying game. I was with the Houston Texans. My opponent was Atlanta Falcons. And um, this guy didn't really get out of any, out of his schemes. He didn't make really any kind of adjustments to what I was doing. Uh, he played his schemes true. Uh, and it was a kind of a game where I was actually kind of sloppy for myself. I actually had to take a couple timeouts uh, early on in the first half just because I wasn't really getting myself established. Third and three situation, I'm going to the spot route. It's a very high percentage pass, and typically I get separation on that, but I, I didn't get the right animation. My opponent was able to go and do that. And right here, it comes with a mid blitz. Uh, and he's able to get pressure. So fourth and three set type of situation, that was just a dumb move. I should have probably just kicked the ball off to the opponent to, to basically give myself an opportunity uh, to uh, make him work for a score. Uh, but uh, foolishly, I went ahead for on a fourth down situation. So you're going to see me make a lot of dumb, boneheaded um, situations. And one of the reasons why is that I was playing with a new regs team. And uh, basically, anytime you play with a new regs team or just a new team in general, uh, you have to get used to the timing. Your, your players don't all play like other teams, and, and sometimes you could, you have to find out what you can get away with, what you can't. And I was it was a learning process for me right here. So fourth and 21 situation, he goes for it. I actually send uh, a mid bless myself and uh, just try to use one of the defenders. Right here, he locks up the play. He actually took away my third and fourth read um, on that particular play. I, I could have th hit the running back on the back end side. So right here, another drop ball uh, by uh, Hopkins, and I'm, I'm forced to burn another timeout. So fourth and 20. Once again, this is just really reckless play by me, uh, considering he didn't really have anything on offense in the first series, and I went ahead and went for it. So just just dumb boneheaded play, but I was just frustrated because I have this great, great wide receiver, which is one of the best wide receivers in the game, and he can't catch a ball at all uh, in traffic. And it, it, his stats say otherwise. He should be, be able to catch those balls. So right here, third and sixth situation, I'm just coming out of the safety blitz. And I'm, I'm running it basically uh, generic. I'm not really making any kind of adjustments. Uh, this is a play that he jumped into and he was running a lot. It was just basically the, 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 the uh, flanker drive play or a trail play. Uh, out of the strong close. Strong close is a formation that people spammed a lot like a few years ago. To see someone just run this exclusively as their offense is very shocking. It's like this guy must have been playing Madden for a long time. Right here was right read. The guy was wide open just to overthrow because of uh, my defender hitting his quarterback. So I went ahead, uh, did hook zones over the middle right here, and actually throws it. I, I pull myself out of position. He's able to get a fourth and one situation. So now I jump into the 4-4 split um, just because I want a little bit more beef up the line, and he gets a nice good uh, block uh, and a good read for a hole to get a first down. So second and two situation, he's got the ball down on the three-yard line. I stay with the 4-4 split. He comes up short. So it's third and inches right here. He goes uh, with I-form and goes uh, does a fullback. And you would think he would have got the separation, but my line actually penetrated his line. So, uh, of course, he no huddles. He makes a couple adjustments. He takes his running back and puts him out, then puts him back in. Showing me the, um, showing me basically some kind of a run, and I actually he throws right into a yellow zone, and I actually get a stop. So he's been using a lot of heavy blitzes out of the uh, out of the nickel a gap. So I'm just expecting him to go and you can see him pulling his safety down. So I know he can't get over Fuller. Fuller's got 99 speed. So I block everybody. I take Fuller. I put him on a streak route. He beats his man. I just lob it up because I had to get rid of the ball. Fuller comes down with it, and look at this. He can't tackle me, and I'm off to the races. So there's no way going to catch 95 speed right here. So I'm able to go ahead and go up by touchdown. 98 yard play. 98 yard play to go and get a touchdown. So back at it again. Uh, I switched it up. I think I went with an over and I'm actually trying to blitz two guys right here. Uh, and I got a good animation right there where, where I can actually go and stop that play. Once again, cover two shell. Showing them the same type of look. I've got pressure coming off the edge and I've got another blitzer coming off the side. And the edge pressure comes in because he's running a play action play. Uh, and I'm actually pass committing and actually getting some pretty good pressure. Right here he actually picks up a blitz. He throws right at me and he gets a really good animation uh, at, with Julio Jones. It's kind of glitchy. A lot more glitchier than Hopkins. I can tell you that much. And he's able to go and get a first down. So right here goes back to that trail uh, play and I, I bit back because I anticipated he'd come back uh, to the, the fullback route or the tight end route. 
Now I take away the, the the wide receiver route. He goes to the fullback route. So, you know, this is old school Madden. This is stuff that people use. Uh, I actually had the blitz set up to get the edge pressure off the left out of, out of that cover two shell, and he quickly goes to a pitch play. So this guy definitely knew what he was doing as far as running his offense, but he was very stubborn and stayed with his offense. Right there, he throws, throws right to my hands, and I actually tackle him for a, for a two-yard gainer, come back to the cover two shell once again. Pressure comes in. He throws it to me. And I've got my uh, tight, uh, or looks like uh, linebacker Cunningham. I'm going to go ahead and get down to the 30-yard line, get down to the 26-yard line, 27-yard line, and Coleman's able to clean me up. So the, right here, I was actually going to go ahead and throw the ball up to the left-hand side to Hopkins because he's pulling a safety down. I actually picked this blitz up. He clicks on and actually gets a really good animation to go ahead and swap that ball. So I'm just really struggling against this guy's defensive back. So the, the, this um, Atlanta team... It's just a really good team. Um, it, it's a better team than it is, than it shows uh, as far as his ratings concerned. So I pop him with Fuller. Fuller was my star wide receiver, and he was, he, I pop him right there to go up 14 to nothing. So once again, back to the safety blitz. You can see the pressure's coming in right here. Um, so that's why I stay with this blitz. I, I, I didn't move, get out of the shell because the way he was running his offense, he was running these play action crossing uh, type formations. Right here, I go ahead and anticipate he's going to do that uh, route, which is going to be the, the flanker drive. And right here, he pops me uh, over the middle of the shell as so I'm pulling my guys down and hits me with a good read. So uh, he set me up for that. He got it. <laughs> he does an onside kick, and my guy does not come down with the ball. I wasn't prepared for it. So this guy is cheese ball. This is like Madden 12, Madden, Madden 13 type situations where guys would just go ahead and basically do onside kicks every play and take, go for two-point conversions. So right here, he throws right back to me. I actually cover up the middle of the field. He threw a lot of balls to me, so there, there was a lot of opportunities where I had additional opportunities to get interceptions, but uh, he would get pretty good animation. So I believe this is Salem. I'm looking um, to the crosser by Fuller. I'm also looking. I looked up top right here. Now the read is up top with uh, with Hopkins because the safety was pulled out of position, and Hopkins actually t catches a ball finally for me. So right here, first and ten type of situation. I'm looking for it. He actually gets a, a, a tackle, and the cl the clock is t it rolled off. So this is the second half. I miss an opportunity for for a field goal primarily because um, I uh, it took t took too many timeouts. Um, I just was not in a rhythm. Them. So once again, throwing in my defenders. Here's a fourth and ten situation. He's doing um, a, a split close uh, shotgun and actually hits a little drag route underneath. And he's able to go and pick up a first down uh, with that with the, uh, with a, with a fall forward animation. So he goes right back to this this drive play right here. Spin move juke move or, or whatever and actually picks up a good first down right there so takes the ball down uh, goes right back to the same place again which I think is a fullback slide and right here I see the big read and I actually get good animation right there to uh, actually get an interception. I don't know how the guy was like 20 yards away, but he's able to go and pick it off. So this is a play that I was playing with, and this is actually causing me to get timeouts right here. I'm looking for the deep ball, and he gets a block shed. He's able to go ahead and sack me right here. So second and uh, 20 situation. I'm looking uh, for the little crossing route uh, uh, on the deep side. I'm able to go and pick up a first down. It was a play that wasn't showing him a lot. Right here is a play out of the Oakham playbook. Uh, it's a cover three shell. This deep comeback route is always wide open in cover three. I just make a very fast read off to the right, and it's just way, I mean, the throw on the inside or the outside or the underneath. And right here, uh, he f runs with a cover two shell. I'm going to go hit him with the seam with that light, with this play. Now, this is an end zone play that I was labbing, and right here, I'm just going to pop it right up in the middle of the end, uh, in the back of the end zone for an easy touchdown. So. 21 to 7, a minute 32 seconds left. He pops his uh, uh, running back, Coleman. He's able to go ahead and get uh, a big play, get it down to 32 yard line with that. Uh, nice little spin move in the hole to be able to actually pick up some pretty good yards. You can see the defender was in the gap to stop him, but he actually had a, a, a good spin move animation right there. And right there, I actually shut down that run the second time. So, third and eight situation. Now I go with just an all, all out. Um, coverage. I go ahead and, and, and send my linebackers right here, looking for the crosser route. So the linebacker actually tackles him, and sacks him for a fourth and 16. So now I jump into the dime defense. Once again, I just want to try to hit him with pressure off the edges. 
His pressure's coming in. He looks for the crosser. I actually pull my guy out of the position, but he doesn't get the ball off. So third and eight situation in the fourth quarter right now. My, my primary goal is to chew down the clock, and I'm missing deep comeback right. I threw the ball early, and that's one of the things. It's just the timing of your, of your plays. It's just a little bit differently when you're playing with a new team. But I'm able to go and hit the seam with Fuller. So Fuller was my MVP in this game. A lot of the yards with uh, in my passing game were all with Fuller. He was making a lot of the plays for me. So nice little inside zone right here. They pick up a nice little chunk of yards. And a third and one type of situation, uh, I'm looking to the crossing route. There's no defender on the crossing route, but he just just outright drops the ball. He should have actually possession catched that. And uh, when I'm settling for three points, I miss kick the ball and just come up short. So I give this guy some life. So a minute and 52 seconds left. He's going back with the same offense. I'm going to stay with, with the same defense. I want to get some pressure. And actually hits the crosser on the back end side. Gets good at animation, spin animation. He's able to go ahead and take it into the end zone to make a game out of this. So now I know he's going to do the onside kick. So I go ahead and take onside kick position. And I'm able to go ahead and recover that. So um, my, my thought process right now is that he's going to be using a lot of mid blitzes against me. So he does man me up. I hit the corner route on the back end side because he peels off to take the hitch route, which actually was lucky for me because he was in position to cut that off and actually pick it off. But he just he misread that. And right here, I take the ball down to the one and I drop. I want this clock ticking off. I end up settling for a field goal right here. I take a couple of his timeouts, and he just chews up the clock, and that's pretty much it for the rest of the game. Back to the crossing routes again was one of his plays, and I'm able to go and click on and actually go and, and intercept the ball. So this is a very frustrating game. But this guy never really changed up his offense too much. He ran a lot of the same plays. A lot of the plays were stock. And that, and uh, he didn't really have an answer for that, that, that safety blitz with the pressure. And I'm able to go ahead and get a win. So once again, my subscribers, thank you for your support, guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'll be rolling out some more tips and some more gameplay coming up soon. And until next time.